Hey guys. A lot of people have been asking what's going on with the Silver Tundra. The one you picked up. The one I picked up that needed a rear end. And uh, lo and behold, uh, Double Cab uses a different rear differential ratio than does, uh, like say my truck. Both of them are 04s, extended cab to a double cab. Extended cab runs 391 gears. Double cab runs uh, 410s. Well, guess what? 410s are very hard to go find for a rear axle assembly. And if you do find them, they're very expensive. So the carrier in the center, new, is like 1800 bucks. I paid 28 for the truck. Um, so I've been trying to shop around. I got on eBay, I found a, a rear diff. It was in Canada. It was mailed to me. And uh, lo and behold, of course, when it showed up, it was a front diff, although it said rear diff on the ad. So they took that back. They did refund me my money. And uh, so I've been chasing just a, a good rear end. Uh, this is limited slip also. Not at this point, I don't even care, but it has limited slip differential, 410 gears with ABS. So it's got the sensors uh, built into the uh, outer uh, extremities of the axles. So I have not had very good luck. There was one on eBay, had Toyota for parts, I called him. And I thought I had it, a whole rear differential, a whole rear axle for um, 350 bucks. And then that has fallen through. He's not calling back and who knows, but uh, he does not have what I need. So I figure I bring it in the garage. We'll take it apart. We'll look and see what we got and uh, possibly maybe be able to fix what we have. So this is the, what's going to be happening on this video. So I'm going to go change the battery in the camera. We'll get underneath and we'll see what we got. All right, let's go underneath and uh, a little show and tell. So what happens to these guys is the skin on the back pumpkin, which is welded on, uh, corrodes. I know. Anyway, it corrodes and the fluid pisses out of it. Well, when the fluid pisses out of it, and you don't know it. It's not like you got a check engine light time, you got low oil or something, you know. Other than the drops, if you park it someplace that you can see the drops would show up. And then you run them, they run out of fluid. And then it, the bearings go dry and they, they fail. So the carrier on this one is right where we're looking. See the color dis distortion? See how that's more orangey towards the front? Uh, he said the truck was running driving erratically and all of a sudden it got really loud and uh, it started to uh, squeal and vibrate and shake and shimmy and he pulled over instantly had it towed but when he looked under the truck right here was glowing red right that right there so that bearing we know is just absolutely baked now the thing is I don't know if it took out the carrier housing which is what you're looking at or the pinion. The pinion is the, uh, you know, this piece that goes through. There's a gear on the end of it. it runs into a ring gear, and drive shaft spins, and it makes this section go around. I don't know if first up by the pinion up here, if it took out that pinion shaft. Uh, I'm not worried about the bearing, but I'm worried about the damage to the shaft and damage to the housing. And then I'm also worried about did the ring and pinion get damaged on those surfaces well we're not going to know until we pull it apart so i guess now is a uh, better time than ever to start doing so we'll get the dry shaft off you gotta uh back off the wheels slide the axles out and then this whole assembly will come uh, out of its location uh, i also figure what we can possibly do is take and say this is shot um we will unbolt the ring gear from it Leave the drive shaft off and run it in four wheel drive for now. We'll just run it like a front wheel drive truck. I believe I can do that with this drive shaft. See what it goes into. Yeah, I think we, yeah, we can unbolt it right there from the carrier up top there. That support. So that I'll take that drive shaft right out, out of our way, and we can do that. But before we commit to doing that, let's see if we have something that is, uh, salvageable or at least we'll know what we need looks like it had new loose springs put on those are new, new shackles there
one side anyway. Yeah, those haven't been replaced. Unless they were replaced for a rot. I don't, I don't see them rotting right out where they're gonna fall off though. Had a new leaf put in it. That one right there is a different color. Sensor that reason and the EABS is right there. See that sensor sticking out of the axle? Oh, yeah, the hub where it bolts in that's for the ABS sensor. So, um, I think I'll probably take the tires off, get them out of our way, get a little bit more room down here. We'll pop the drain plug out, see if anything pisses out of it, and uh, we'll start. I, like I said, we'll pull these axles away and see if we can get that out. So, I know I've been talking, let me get some work done. All right, plus your bets. You think anything's gonna come out of it? I'm gonna say just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. Something's oh, coming out. I expected it to be much more dirty than that. I don't know if the light's showing. It's got metal in it. And out of metal is coming out. So we'll let that run a little bit. I'm going to go uh, disconnect the brake lines from the backing plates and then spray so I'm going to get those four nuts off each side and then I can pull the axles back. Let me go get some uh, happy juice on them first though. And as I said, not even enough to cover the bottom of the pan. Lead to having some problems, I guess. No big clumps of metal yet, though. They're probably still in the bottom of it. Probably sitting right here. So uh, I went to go get the brake lines off, and the outer ones, uh, I cracked the lines loose, but their car's trying to twist the line. So I went trying to find some place else that they would break, and I got that one to go right there. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to undo the, the hardware that's got it attached to the axle and we'll let the brake lines kind of slide with the drum. I think you got to back them up probably about three, four inches per side. So it's not uh, terrible, but we got to get all this stuff loose so that they can go. They may or may or not play well neither. Huh? You guys that don't live with rusty cars, you don't know what you're missing. It's awesome. Let's see how this works out. I don't see much light. Light the situation up. All right, so I'm working with some really rusty bolts, and I already broke one on the far extremity bit. That one just wasn't happening. Uh, if you could, Steve is your friend, but he's not your friend in this area. So I put a ratchet on it, and I had it kind of. It's moving a little bit. It. So what I want to do is put a wrench on it. In the area that it's moving, you want to work that till it gets free. Instead of just trying to back it all the way out. What it does, it just pushes all the crap out of the threads. And it heats it up a little bit, the heat of the friction of it. And I guarantee if I would have just tried backing this one out, it just would have snapped off. And once you get them out, I like to clean them up on a wire wheel. The bolt. Not the nut. 
and these are not nut and bolts these are threaded onto the axle on a bracket so you kind of screwed Is that going to show? Not going to show much of anything, is it? Because you're zoomed in. Yeah, it's the cruddy threads. So, got uh, I think one or two more to get on this side, and then I'll start unbolting the axles. One side's out. That's the ring for the ABS, and here's the sensor. I had to heat those suckers. They're probably Loctite from the factory, but uh, they were Loctite and and crud crud tidy did. Is that a word? So we we'll do the other side now. Uh, sitting on a jack stand, I don't want uh, whatever it has for a seal out there to be uh, being hammered on. And uh, those jack stands are pretty cool. They got. Um, let me go get the other one. They have like a a sand. Probably beads, beads of some sort. So, how these work is there's a small hole on the end of this pipe, it's capped off with a small hole on the bottom of it. And when you lift, hear them pouring through, it keeps changing height. And then, when you want to put them back down again. Well, the sand runs back the other way. Starts to back off low, and it's infinite adjustment. A little bit, good. A little more, good. Good. So you just go right to whatever you want, right at where you want it. You run it up, and there's no, you know, setback on it. You have to pick a pin or a notch. All right, let me get the other side done. I think it's time to crack that coconut. I got some uh, rubber matting on the floor. Because these can be pretty heavy. <laughs> so, if I go to lose it, at least I'll hit it on that. Better if you make noises, don't you know that? Right. But I don't see smash busted off teeth right away. That's a good sign, I guess. So let's get this thing over on the bench and uh, get a better, better look at it. Yeah, it's got a little bit of weight to it. some brake clean on those teeth and take a look at them. I don't see anything that is jumping out that like like no forget it it's done kind of deal. It looks like it I'm not sure if it's supposed to look that way or not. I'm looking at the black here. I'm just wondering if this is due to generating a lot of heat or it's just the way it is. Could be just sludge on the outside of it too. That's what it is. Good. I would just keep taking it apart. There's no reason why to. So you yeah, know that's the bearing that we know is bad and just whatever other collateral damage it did. Okay, when I take it apart, so I can look back at this video, anything that was on this side with the ring gear facing this direction, 
was on that side. Because you know, you'll put it back together and you'll have it the other way around. And, you know. Let's go uh, take the other end apart. See what that looks like. So that's where the all the magic happened. Or do you need to have to get one to press? That might all be welded together too. Yeah, it'll come apart one way or another. So now I flipped it over again and I don't know what I did for each side. I haven't taken it apart yet, but this is where the bearings can come off. And we want everybody to play nice together. Your team green? Anything gonna come on you? I don't have a paint stick. Screw it. Shall we? get my parts that are embedded in little metal bits and have a little dirt on them. Got a lot of something. Flung a lot of whatever that is. She feels like burned up grease, not metal. That's good. Try it. Go ahead. Looks squeamish about getting her hands dirty. I don't know. Yeah, you gotta clean it and see. I'm gonna go put the whole thing in a parts washer. As I drop the, all right. Before I get carried away and everything loses its position. Let me uh, clean this stuff up once a, one at a time on the washer, set them back on the bench in its row. And uh, we'll see what we got. I ended up putting a piece of mechanics wire through that whole stack and that way everything just kind of maintains where its locations were. Yet they can flop around and I can wash stuff. So, let's 
it's not looking too good. It's got a lot of a uh, galling, I'm going to call it. A lot of face to face contact with another metal part with no lubrication. The parts really, when you think about it, don't actually touch. There's a thin oil, a layer of oil that they kind of float on. And when that oil goes away, that's what you get. Try to get the light so it helps you. There you go. Do I think I could put a bearing in it and would it run? Yeah, it would run. I don't know how long for. So, try to turn it in a different spot. Yeah, they're not looking good. So, I'm going to continue to press that guy out of there. And it's kind of what I was afraid of, kind of what I figured would run into it. That's why I was trying so hard to have something to put back in when I took it apart because that doesn't roll out of the garage very easy, you know? So I think what I'm gonna do, we'll continue to take that apart, see if the case is screwy or not. And again, like I said, I think I could take the ring gear off. Probably gonna want, yeah, that might be okay. And then the other bolts hold, still hold the clutch pack together. And leave that sitting in the front with nothing on it. So essentially nothing spinning anymore in here. It's just um, the two axles kind of coming in. The only thing that really needs to stay kind of wet is uh, those two bearings. So we'll see. Let me uh, get that apart and uh, can do a better decision from there. So I was going to grab it by the flange and try pulling the flange off first. I'm going to just try pushing it right out. That, everything's shot up here anyway. I don't think I'm going to damage or hurt anything. But uh, we'll try this first and if it works. Where you get scared that something's just gonna absolutely explode and take you out. I'm gonna try wrapping it with a hammer and shocking it. Just set something up so you can grab it by the collar and pull the collar off. You know I should have watched a YouTube video of how this thing comes apart. That's so interesting. Let's try this. I don't think the seal's good anymore. I got a retaining ring and I've been beating the crap out of it the other direction. Looks like we gotta go give it another bath and we'll kind of see what's going on inside there. These are shims. That's the race from the uh, seal. There's there's carnage. There's the there's the problem right there. 
Okay, I got a little on the hot side. You can see the oil passage too. It's supposed to flow through the bearing. There's a channel down here. The oil runs back into the main cavity and the, when the ring gear flips it around, it, it splashes it through the top. It comes in through one and pushes out through the other. Yeah. Okay, I got a little hot. But I don't see any of like the bearings that you know got ripped out of there and got thrashed through the whole thing. At least that part's good. So like I don't feel like it um, really pumped a bunch of big metal parts, just dust <laughs> through its system. I'm gonna go wash that out and uh, we'll get a better look. Blew it off the compressed air, just get all the cruddies out of it. Should have just put oil back in, it would have been fine. So I have a feeling that the center race is welded to the pinion. I think that's what happened and that's why it will not press out. So it's probably why they sell it as a unit, huh? Because how are you gonna get that apart without destroying the case, you know? So, I got some thinking to do. Um, I'm gonna try pressing it out one more time just for shits and giggles, but I don't think it's gonna, uh, I don't think it's gonna go. Again, worst case is, I'll put this back together, get another seal maybe, and we'll put it back together. Just bolt this end on it so fluid doesn't leak out of it. Uh, take on the rear where the rear's leaking we'll just take some uh mix up some putty and uh, we'll putty up the uh jb weld or something you know where the hole is where the fluids were leaking out and uh like i said just take the ring gear off for now and we'll just put it back together and i'll just i could search for another uh carrier that's what it's called and a complete unit and see how i want to go uh if not just be a front wheel drive truck so anyway this may or may not be the end of this. If it is, see ya. Thanks. How about some good old heat? Getting up and lose, right? Brass. Could probably try shattering the cage. It's just brass falling off. Yeah, I don't think she's gonna go. Get the balls out of the, out of the bearing. It the inner race might clear the other side, but it's iffy. You don't know if it will or not. Hmm. Be dumb if I do find out it's got a slip ring or something on it. Fail. You know well how well I like uh, projects that got a little bit of rust. Cause I like doing metal work. This is my next one.
I mean, it'll buff out. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. They make a nice desk. Or a couch or a table or... Scrap metal. If you guys get on smell. I think the top will work too. The top's on anything holding it together. <laughs> We're not hit those buckles. What's been fun getting off the trailer? Two forklifts. One in the back and one on the side and then drove the truck out from under it.